Has the telecoms industry finally come up with a way to unlock the radio access network, seen by many as the last bastion of closed proprietary solutions? VMware and Deutsche Telekom have been collaborating on an open and intelligent VRAN platform based on ORAN standards and using Intel's FlexRAN architecture to bring greater agility to radio access networks for both LTE and 5G. Joining me now to discuss the solution and the benefits it brings are Abdul Razak Mudassir, who is SVP Technology Architecture and Innovation at Deutsche Telekom, Caroline Chan, VP and GM 5G Infrastructure Division, Network Platform Group at Intel, and Sashin Kati, who is VP Telco Strategy at VMware. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Nice to be here. Hi, Jim. Our pleasure. Um, Abdul, let me start with, with you. Um, Tell us more about this open VRAN platform that you first announced in February. Yes, um, indeed, that was actually a great milestone for us and also for the industry. Why is it so? Uh, we were able to deploy in our lab here in Bonn the first VRAN platform using standard cloud uh, platform coming from VMware, but also the FlexiRAN from Intel, uh, and most importantly, also using, I mean, fully standard compliant or unstandard compliant and early implementation of the RIC, which allows for simple intelligent management. This is a really important step for us towards the commercialization of the ORAN based uh, virtual run. And Abdul, why is this important for Deutsche Telekom? Why the move to investigate Open Run? I think that the most important uh, fact is that we have seen all our adjacent industry moving towards cloud. There is this agility, speed and innovation coming across the cloud players and also from the chipset industry. And in the run, we've had really competent and excellent vendors driving this closed run ecosystem. And I think by now innovating and widening or opening up the radio access network, we will have new players enriching the ecosystem and allowing us to really learn and utilize new technologies, both from cloud, but also startups such as, uh, or smaller players like uh, Mavinair or startups such as Cohere Technology. And that's exactly why we are innovating and pushing. And ultimately, we believe it will provide us a TCO advantage and it will provide us enhanced customer experience, including speed. Well, let's hear how your partners have helped. Sachin, let, let's start with VMware. Tell us about how uh, VMware has been involved in this project. Uh, thanks. Uh, so I think VMware, uh, as Abdu mentioned, uh, what we are trying to build here is a horizontal cloud architecture uh, for allowing you to deploy uh, various network workloads. And I think the final bastion, the final milestone here is uh, being able to do that for radio access network uh, functions, uh, such as uh, LTE or 5G base stations. And I think uh, with uh, Deutsche Telekom, what we are doing is building that cloud platform and showcasing that it is now capable of delivering ORAN compliant virtualized radio access networks. And the other capability that uh, we are collaborating with Dosh Telecom on is uh, on building this uh, radio intelligent controller, the RAN intelligent controller uh, that ORAN is proposing uh, to allow you to introduce new innovative technologies uh, into the radio access network, which has been historically quite long. So VMware is kind of uh, building two fundamental components uh, to deliver on this ORAN vision. One is the cloud, the horizontal cloud architecture to deliver data center economics and uh, cloud agility into the radio access network. And two is the ra ra radio controller platform to open up the radio access network and enable new innovations uh, that optimize spectral efficiency, reduce the TCO uh, to be introduced more rapidly into the radio access network. And Caroline, how has Intel been involved with the collaboration? So, uh, well, uh, here at Intel, we've been working on this uh, VRAN concept for a long time. We uh, deliver both the Howard Silicon platform, these uh, CPU plus the right accelerators. 
And also, uh, we've been working on a flex run reference software stack, which has LTE and 5G. We just recently delivered URLC and also TSN. The idea is to be partnering uh, with the, the line mines like uh, VMware and Deutsche Telekom really started driving a cloud native all the way down into the network. Just like Abdul was saying that there's a lot of uh, goodness that we can gain from that agility, flexibility. And, and we, we believe that there is a TCO gain at the end. So we invested uh, our resources. We invested a roadmap in order to uh, really energize and uh, help pushing this forward. Caroline, can you tell us a little more about the FlexRun architecture? So the FlexRun architecture is actually based on the Intel CPU with the uh, acceleration built-in. We are actually pipelining the LTE as well as the 5G uh, layer one, uh, all the way through on top of the CPU and with, uh, uh, with acceleration. We provide that as a license to our uh, customers. Uh, they, they just sign a license agreement with us and they will be able to use it to build up their final product that's uh, virtualized RAN LTE as well as the latest uh, release 16 5G. Great. Well, let's look a, a little bit more into ORAN itself. I'd like to ask all, all three of you about how you're furthering the, the ORAN mission. Um, Sashin, what would you say are the main benefits of ORAN? I think the biggest benefit is uh, really giving operators more choice uh, into how they deploy the radio access network, right? So historically, the radio access network has been vertically integrated. All of the different components uh, that you get are coming from a single uh, vendor ecosystem. And ORAN is driving uh, disaggregation. Right? So it's allowing more choice at every layer of the stack so that operators can pick the best of breed uh, in each aspect. Uh, the second big benefit is really opening up the radio access network to be programmable and allow you to introduce uh, new capabilities uh, that uh, that better that optimize the network, deliver better capacity and latency and so on. But I think more importantly, as 5G comes along and operators are looking to build and monetize new revenue streams on top of this 5G capability that they're deploying, uh, ORAN is providing the interfaces for you to enable, for example, enterprise services uh, that take advantage of such programmability uh, to deliver differentiated services on top of the network. So I think if I were to sum up, it's about disaggregation, it's about virtualization, enabling a very flexible, agile network, and it's about programmability so that operators can very quickly deploy new services and monetize their 5G investments uh, much better. And Caroline, can you tell us a little bit more about Intel's position on ORAN, how and why you're supporting the initiative? So we've been uh, part of ORAN from the early inception. Uh, we just like Sachin was saying, we do believe that ORAN is the right step forward for the industry to create a broad ecosystem because we all understand that 5G is not just about smartphones. It's, it's about going into the enterprise. It's about providing different level of services that DT is uh, really driving forward. So we've been uh, contributing our uh, software, and we've been contributing our uh, expertise, especially around the uh, the virtualization layer, that, that how does that tie into the silicon? Um, we actually supported some of the interoperability lab effort that's that's going on. We have people sitting on different subgroups and, and co-chairs and and so on. So we wanted to see this being uh, ORAN being successful, and we want to see the ecosystem enlarge from beyond uh, the, what the traditional telco is, and really bringing the level of uh, developers and application services, because we are seeing a lot of the application services that need in 5G really comes from outside of the the, the traditional telco players. So we have to be driving that in order to grow this uh, uh, the level of uh, the richness of the application that we need to make 5G ROI uh, viable for, for, uh, for companies like DT. Great, and companies like DT. So Abdu, t tell us more then. Um, what advantages will an ORAN environment ultimately bring to your customers? So I think um, uh, most important points were already mentioned by uh, Caroline and uh, Sakin. And they are indeed true, right? So the agility uh, allowing us to really 
embark on new business opportunity and also cost cutting and all of that is i mean tcos uh, optimization it's all there but i think one thing that's not mentioned that i see it as, as an important aspect is also it allows us to uh, introduce new operating model uh, which means today we have a vendor and uh, let's say operator relationship where we buy a box uh, in, really deploy and that's it now we go into more of a partner model where we really have to understand work together with our partners and really also change how we are operating which of course brings its own a uh, challenge we need to have the right skill set we need to have the right mindset and of course uh, we need to have the right uh, mature ecosystem great and Sashin, for those other telcos that are considering ORAN, what technologies are a precursor to the capabilities that ORAN will unlock? I think there are, there are a few, and this is uh, what uh, we are collaborating with uh, DT on, uh, with Abdul's, uh, Abdul's team. Uh, so the first one is uh, around uh, disaggregated uh, radio uh, ecosystem. So being able to build a platform, and this is what uh, VMware and Intel are working on, to make sure that when you deploy radio hardware on the top of cell towers, uh, that you have uh, all of those different uh, vendors' radio hardware be interoperable. Uh, with the, the baseband software uh, that is running on a cloud. The second, and I think this is a pretty important one, is how do you build a reliable compute substrate? So if you are going from purpose-built hardware to general purpose hardware that's being used for a variety of compute, and then you're overlaying a cloud substrate on top of it, but you want to use it for mission critical applications such as a base station. And these uh, uh, applications are also extremely latency sensitive. So how do you build a very reliable cloud that an operator like DT can trust to deploy a mission critical service uh, like the radio access network connectivity on top of, right? So that's the second kind of enabling technology. And the last one to kind of come back to Abdul's point about operating model and uh, introducing more agility is about what, what are all the interfaces uh, that need to be specified and then the management and control platforms uh, that are uh, supporting those interfaces and building that developer ecosystem on top uh, to deliver all those new capabilities that we all hope uh, will unlock uh, new revenue opportunities uh, for operators, right? So I'd say, uh, doing the interoperability with all of the different hardware pieces that are coming because of disaggregation, uh, building a very reliable, high-performance cloud substrate for deploying mission-critical workloads, and finally, uh, building the management systems with the appropriate interfaces uh, so that uh, you can drive new operational models and new innovations uh, in this whole ecosystem. Well, let's look ahead to the benefits that all this might bring to the industry. Caroline, how do you see the future of the Open RAN? I, I think the open ran, uh, like everyone's saying, I, ideally will open up a whole new uh, uh, ecosystem players. Um, it's, it, I think it's especially important if we think about what what uh, the five G is gonna have to to do in, in the enterprise side. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of activities around V two X. We're seeing a lot of activities in the industrial uh, inside in, industrial factories. In fact, uh, Intel has been involved in several of them in, in, in Europe, in, in Germany. Um, so you look at the ecosystem, it really went beyond what, the, what uh, Adup was describing in an operator and a vendor, uh, a telco vendor relationship. We have adding so many, interjecting so many new players in there. Without a open um, interface like ORAN is uh, prescribing and, and help drive, it's, I, it's hard to see how would these developers really come in and start developing softwares with the confidence that you will get deployed at just as well on the top of a cell tower and inside a factory floor or a, or a retail factory or a hanging on a roadside unit. So if we were going to em embrace the idea that 5G brings a much bigger temp, a uh, much broader uh, uh, ROI for everyone in the ecosystem. You have to think the the path that ORAN is advocating, the standards that they're driving is the right path to go. Great. And, and Sasha, with, with these new players coming on board, with these new use cases we've been talking about, what type of, of new applications will an open virtual RAN enable? 
There's so many that uh, I mean I think we can spend the whole uh, whole interview talking about the use cases, right? So, but just to pick on a couple, uh, I think the big vector that uh, we should think about is enterprise uh, use cases uh, that are being uh, delivered on top of 5G. And specifically, what I mean by that is uh, where uh, the enter- definition of enterprise is not just your traditional IT enterprise, uh, but it could be uh, new enterprises like the factory floor, the warehouse, transportation, and so on. So fundamentally think of uh, services where instead of the application treating the network as, as, a, as a connectivity layer, there's actually APIs and integration between the application and the network so that you can deliver differentiation, you can deliver SLAs at an application layer. Right. So instead of an enterprise saying, let me buy connectivity and then let me just buy services from someone else, the 5G network is not just a connectivity service. It becomes a platform on top of which they can buy applications uh, that are services uh, that are differentiated, have SLAs associated with them that the network operator can stand behind. So I think uh, use cases around smart factories, uh, robotics. Uh, simple, simpler things such as uh, AR or VR, uh, and not simpler in the sense of uh, being able to deliver consumer video applications like that. So all of these are uh, services uh, that are coming on top of this such a platform. And Abdul, a final question to you. Um, what are the next steps that are required for Deutsche Telekom and its customers to realize the benefit of this solution? Yeah, I think um, the first thing is uh, we still have to continue to drive the ecosystem into maturity, right? There's still questions around performance that we have shown already in the first stage uh, that's a right uh, path, but there's still room to work on. We need to make sure that there is certain level of feature parity, yeah? even if it's not one-to-one copy. And that's something we need to still continue to drive. We need to also solve the integration complexity. I think it's not possible that mm-hmm. the integration complexity gets dumped to uh, an operator because we don't have the capability, but we, this is not what, you, what we're doing. I really appreciate what we are pushing together with the partners in terms of open interfaces, easy integration, and easy management. And that's still a room uh, to be worked on. And that's why we as, at Deutsche Telekom also set up a, a lab in Berlin where we are allowing for smaller uh, players and big players, all ecosystem players to come and really test in our environment, an OT club in Berlin, and even offer certification together with um, Oran. So and that's something we will continue to encourage, but we need to still work with the community. Well, Abdu, Caroline, and Sachin, thank you all very much for joining us and sharing your insights on not just Oran, but the Intelligent Virtual RAM platform. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you.